Hey everybody, Mark Edward Lewis here from cinemasound.com. We're going to go through the Foley library here. This is sort of the basics, just kind of going over all that's sort of here in contact and give you a general overview and then many other video tutorials on how to implement it, how to use it, and even... What is Foley? Why do we care? Okay, so you load it up into Contact, just the same old way you would any old sound source, either by drag and dropping from the desktop, the instrument of your choice, uh, or going through the libraries here uh, on your desktop. There, there's no way to do this kind of thing. You're just going to be here under Files, and then selecting the instruments that you want over there. Uh, okay, so once it's up, I've loaded, actually, these are the female footsteps, which is dope. Um, yay, this is the name, Cinema Sound Foley. And then uh, Footsteps Female. And then over here, these are your layers. So each one of these layers, uh, A and B, allows you to be able to have up to five different banks. And each one of these is linked to a specific key on the keyboard. And that's these keys down here. Oops, he's right here. Uh, which we'll talk about in a moment. You can see here is C0, C sharp 0, D0, and all, the, and then the from F0 to A0 for layer B. This allows you to be able to instantly switch between any of these five banks, and a bank is like a, 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 a loading of sounds on your keyboard. So you can, and I'm going to show you how to do that in other videos, but uh, and why it's super dope. But uh, you, so you can switch between any five here, any five here, and then with this right here, this little slider thingy here, you can automate mixing between them. So you could theoretically have two of these sounds banging away at once if you really wanted some powerful crunch, which is totally dope. Cool. And then um, once you load them, you load them basically by clicking, and then you get the bank load window. And as you scroll through, you get the various sounds kind of previewed for you, so you get a little idea of what's what. So um, to select, you can either hit load sound back, uh, load sound bank here, or double click. So we're just going to load up uh, carpet barefoot medium, double click, and a lot of things change, right? All of a sudden, our everything gets active, and of course, we see the waveform that we've selected on the very first key here. Now that we have this selected, let's take a look briefly here at the keyboard on the bottom keyboard. That's B, whatever that is, minus one, is what we call round robin. Now, for those of you who are burger freaks, it has nothing to do with, you know, the big, you know, robin burger. What's the name of that burger place? Robert, robin. Anyway, whatever. Nothing to do with that. It's that every time you press B minus one, the uh, contact will cycle through all of the samples on the keyboard. So I'm going to do that right now. I've got my keyboard here. So minus one, that's not B minus one, that's B zero. Here's B minus one. And you can see down, well, for you, it's over that away, that away. As I move up the keys, I'm just continuing to hit the B minus one key. And it'll continue all the way up until I get into the next section. And go back to the top. So if you don't like performing, you know, doing all these kinds of things, which I honestly strongly suggest you learn how to do, and it's, I'll show you how to do it. But um, then all you got to do is hit this key, and it'll cycle you through. And if you're like, oh, I want to I start over, um, you just go to the keyboard, press any one of these other keys, and wherever you press, that's where the round robin will continue until it cycles through again. Cool. All right, so that's the round robin key. These keys down here, oops, the blue keys, the C uh, to the E, conveniently correspond to these layer A sound banks. And then the same with the pink lavender, they correspond here to the layer B sound banks, which is totally dope. Uh, so let's just check that out for a second. I'm going to load, okay, so we got carpet barefoot medium. Uh, let's do carpet boots with heels medium. Now notice that loads into the second uh, bank, sound bank position. And then let's load tennis shoes carpet loud. Let's load tennis shoes medium. Let's load tennis shoes soft. Totally dope. And then let's load tennis shoes run over here on layer B. 
Cool, so now I've got five banks loaded into layer A. Now I can click on these and reload any of these sounds if I want. I can also click over here on this little, oops, this little thing right here, and you can save all of these sounds and, their, and any of the bits that we're gonna show you how to use for effects and things like that as an entire kind of a preset for an entire layer. And those presets for each layer can be loaded to, into either A or B. Super cool. Wow, that arrow just goes right behind that. That's cool. All right, these layer keys. Let's check them out. I'm going to reach over here, and these are the keys. I can actually just play them any the way I want. And then layering, notice as I select each of the C0, C sharp 0, D0, I get instantly a different selection. And I can go over and do the same thing on B, although I've only got one selected. So right now, I'm going to take this mix tab. And I'm going to move it all the way over to the left, which means that only layer A is going to be heard. And as I play these, and I can switch between them at random. And all of these are MIDI events, so that if you're in your digital audio workstation, all of those can be randomly selected. Now, if I go and take the mix tab over to the right, now I'm only going to hear layer B. That's the carpet tennis shoes run. And when I put this in the middle, I get whatever is on layer A and B together. So I'm gonna go back to barefoot medium. And I can select any of the patches, or, or rather banks on layer A, while layer B gives me some nice extra juice. And if I'm like, well, that layer B is a little too much, we just mix it down a little more. And we have full control over all of it. You can also automate this from your digital audio workstation as well as an automated control which is super cool. What you're seeing here is the actual sample, the actual sound itself from whatever's being played uh, on the banks in whatever layer. The next controls down here control individual keys and individual samples on every bank, which is totally dope. So this is volume, and if I go back to the original here and we just select only layer A sounds. You might make the mistake of thinking that turning this up and down changes the entire bank, but it doesn't. It only changes one key or one sample on your bank. So if I bring, if I take this first key here and I can bring it down very quietly, but notice the next key is still the same, is full volume, and it see it returns to its nominal default position. But I go back and it's quiet. I can also turn it way up. And that's super cool. So if you want to create your own kind of volume index or volume matrix to maybe make the, I don't know, maybe you want to make the Foley footsteps a little more even or a little less even, whatever you want to do, you can do that individually on every key for all of these controls. Um, by the way, to dr drop this back to zero, you just hold down command or control and click. We also have pitch, which is super useful for effects. Again, only one key, and then the, the, all the rest of the keys are, are unaffected, which is so, super dope. Let's go back here and reset it. And then pan, of course. Pretty obvious what that's all about. Sample start is very effective, especially with clothing and skin, which we'll talk about when we load those libraries, where maybe you want less of a ramp in, because a lot of the samples are sampled, you know, they, don't, they aren't like footsteps where there's an actual attack, except for the hit library, but you can, you know, have a nice little crescendo in depending on the movement of the sample and depending on what you want on camera. Sample start kind of uh, accelerates that by moving the sample start position earlier or rather later in time, which makes it earlier for you to play. So check this out. In fact, you can get to this kind of the, the toe action up if you wanted. And again, it's only for whatever note. These are all unaffected unless I go here. And you can see, of course, how this is changed in the sample window, which is another really great way this window can support what you're up to. You can get it all the way back there, which is cool. 
attack is works the same way it does in an analog synthesizer. How long does it take the amplifier to get the sound up to its full volume? So it's you would think it's sort of like sample start, but it actually works in tandem with sample start. Wherever the sample start is, is where the beginning of the attack begins its volume rise. At zero, it happens, as you can see, instantly, zero milliseconds. In fact, let's load a really crispy sound. Here we are with carpet tennis shoes loud, and let's move the sample start just slightly in so it really cracks on top of it, and let's slow the attack down. And it works with the sample start, so I can even move the sample start later and get just the pickup and then make the attack quicker. Release functions in exactly the same way uh, as an analog synthesizer does on key up. So it begins once you release the key or the end of the MIDI event happens. And basically, how long does it take the sound to go from its full volume to nothing? The default is around 300 milliseconds or so. Again, for every key, it has its own. So if we want to do something that's really, really fast, I can bring this down to zero and it's instant. And if I want to really snap it up, I can use start. And a little attack just to slow it a little bit so it's not a tick. Now release doesn't work until I pick up the key, so I can still play the entire sample by holding the key down. It goes all the way to the end. But if I want to make it short, I can do that. Now all these controls are identical for layer B. So let's take a look at these controls right here. The reset sample, reset bank, and apply to all. Now these all work on one key or one sample, one note at a time. But what if you wanted to apply them to everything? You could. So let's say we wanted to move the sample starts just a little bit earlier for all of them. Just to get rid of the little bit of a, a, a walk, you know, a little bit of the kind of the pre-press on the carpet. If, but unfortunately, it doesn't work on any of these, only on that key. So if I wanted to, to really cut those attacks down, I could say apply to all, and now it applies to all the keys. Now, if you're like, oh, man, I hated that edit or uh, that I did to the entire bank, you can just click on Reset Bank, and it sets everything back to the defaults. And if you were just wanted to do that, let's say you've had a whole lot of elements to one particular note, and you're like, eh. I just want to start over on that one note alone. You just hit reset sample and it brings it all back to the default.